is I've set up a base file that has all of our patch and everything currently set. When you get to your, what I would do is set it up in base file and then go to save as under show file archives. Do you really want to save? Yes. And it's going to ask you, where do you want to save it? Well, I want to save it in as, who wants to go? Sure. There we go. <laughs> so, whoa. you can't see in the dark. J A R. We'll call it Jared 22. Now we have Jared 22. So when Jared comes in, he can go to File, Open. And if I did that correctly, we'll have a Jared 22. Jared 22. Hit OK, everything's highlighted. Hit OK. His show was just brought back in. Cues, mm. everything's ready to go. Mm. When you save, it's going to automatically save to that. Now, be very, very careful because if you come in and you start doing your thing and hit record, it's going to record over Jared22, and he's going to be very upset, rightly so. We do have a thumb drive. I would encourage you to bring a thumb drive and you can do the same thing. When you go, when you have a thumb drive in there and you go to save as, it's gonna give you another option of where to save it to. It'll say, I think it's E drive. It'll show you the E drive. Just hit it to E drive and it'll save over there and you can pull it out of there. So you can that way save you it onto the console and onto the thumb drive. Yes, have a, a backup, <laughs> lots of backup. And we can use the one software that we can download to our own computers and programs. Absolutely, and then you can record that to your thumb drive, bring it in, and then you open from your thumb drive. What's the name of that software again? Uh, it's on ETC etcconnect.com and it's the offline editor for EOS. Thank you. EOS. So I'm, I'm recording this. So no, I'll have I, to yeah, ask a thousand yeah. questions. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. Please do. That's, That's awesome. Hopefully you can Kansas share with everybody. Afterwards. Okay, yeah, so, so when we're in Jared, <laughs> so this little triangle over here will shut down the browser. So it just, it just gives you more space to look at. Um, again, we, we're set up in our submasters. So we have our one through nine lights in one through nine. 21 through 29 are our psych lights. So again, last takes priority. So this is the last thing to touch those. I can also turn off the palettas because those are the last things that hit. So, um, so we'll bring those guys back up again. Now, with, the, with any of the automated stuff, and we're gonna call the LEDs or automateds as well because they have so many internal functions, we're gonna use what's called the, the moving light control. So when we have 21 through 29 enter, we have these tabs at the bottom of the screen here, and there's one that says ML control. It might be set up in something different. If you hit ML control, it'll show up. If for some reason somebody does something and it, you don't find it down here, just hit the plus button and it's sitting right there, ML, moving lights. It's got little beams of light, so it looks like moving lights. Click that and it'll come into this. This is gonna self-populate with whatever that lighting fixture that you have selected is capable of doing. So for the LED strips, you can pick individual colors and adjust the, the intensity. You can come over and pick specific colors on the color picker, or you can come through and hit where it says gel. You can hit gel, and then you could look at, uh, let's see, I don't use this very often. So I think it's silly. Oh, there it is. If you page down a little bit, you can go to Roscoe. So if you have the Roscoe book and you like R24, then you can click over and do R24 and it's going to approximate that gel color. Approximate. Right, it's not gonna get dead on, but that way if you pull a gel out of here that's an R24 and put it up one of the lights, it's going to be close between the two. Again, it's going from an arc light to LEDs. Uh, and then you also have intensity you control there, or you can control intensity here. They do not have the greatest dimming curves. Remember we were talking in the lab the other day about the dimming curves. This is about a 1% drop off. So as soon as you hit between one and zero, it's off or on. So figure that out in your project because it, it, it will have an effect. It's actually really doing some really cool things right now yeah. with the shadow gradation. Mm -hmm. It's actually really kind of neat. Dibs. 
kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, that's all 21 through 29. There's nothing to say you can't say, I want to do 21 and 23 and 25 and 27 and 29, enter, and then come back to um, and set those at red. Um, So again, you can control each of those bars individually. You can control them all at once. You can control half of them. You could do 21 through 29, effect 9, 12, and send them through a little effect processor that's set up. And you can actually see what's happening here on the screen. They're just basically going through little Stupid. Or you can just, there's some other color effects. If you hit effect twice, it'll take you into the effect screen and there's actually a few like 910 through 914 are set up as color. Actually, they go all the way down to 918. So rainbow RGB, 917. Go back to live, 21 through 29, effect 917, enter. And now that's running through a rainbow effect. Silly, that looks really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like how green just popping in. Yeah, I don't know why I say that. I too am here. Let's do the police and then <laughs> right. yeah. somebody has a green laser. <laughs> you can certainly do a really cool effect yeah, back there. You can say it's as a fire, as a, as a you know, as a police effect. Yes. The party police. So I'm done with those 21 through 29 out, and they all go away. We also have the palettas, which are. There is a light over on the side of the console so that you can program in the dark. Um, 39 and 40 at full. Yes. And then again, ML control. Those have the same capabilities. You can match gel colors. You can just use the color picker. Um, you can use one and the other. You don't have to do both of them at the same time. You can just choose one over the other. So if you wanted to have one set at blue, and then you wanted to have 40 set at yellow, then you could do that. Are there curves on that circle where you can't drag the color picker? Yes. So any of the, because each of the different lighting fixtures, they have their own capabilities of what they're capable of doing. So you'll see this, that little dotted line in between there. That's what that fixture is capable of doing. Okay. It'll look different when you're on a different LED fixture. So yeah, for some reason, this one just can't quite get out to that bright, bright green. That's as close as you can get to that bright green. And that indigo blue right there, it can't quite get out to the true, true darker blue. It only go that far. And you can even try to scrub it out there and it won't go past that point. Um, you can also deal with this. Instead of doing the color picker, you can choose up here. So the little house means that it's going to send it to its home position. <clears throat> so if I go through and just click out zeros or minimums, then I could take out, that's only a one light, 39 and 40 at full, and I'm going to home all of these. So right now, that's all colors coming out of those lights, all the capabilities of those lights. Um, if I wanted to be more on the cooler side, I can hit minimum on all of the warms, pull all those out, and start to turn it bluer. Or if I wanted to just hit green, then I can pull out all the colors except the green. Do they have more red bulbs than blue and green because of how much light they put out? Red? Yes. Okay. All right, so then those are those guys. Those are 39 and 40. So 39 and 40, out. That's going to be your friend, out. Um, then the little movers. Those are going to be 31 and 32. 31 and 32 are there. So uh, you'll see that the moving light is populated with a lot more stuff. <coughs> Bless you. Not a lot more stuff, but some stuff. So we've got color, so we can choose our color. Um, the one thing, the two things that are different in this, we have, well, there's actually a few things. We have our zoom. So right now that's as tight as those fixtures will go, but then we can increase it and widen them out, widen the beams. 
Um, we also have the focus, so this is a pan and a tilt. If you click anywhere in this and just click and hold the mouse button down, now you're controlling this, where it moves to. They move very, very fast. So the only thing I don't like about this console, the other consoles that we have have a, a dial that you can sit here and dial them in. Uh, makes it a little bit more easier. You can also use, there's two dials on the pan and tilt, so if you, you could sit here and very close to the center, if you're just above it, very slowly you can start to pan and tilt uh, to help you fine tune it a little bit. If you're below the line, it'll go the opposite direction. If you're above, above center, it'll go the opposite direction. Okay, if you get completely lost, hit the little house buttons. Tilt, tilt, and it'll go right back to its home position and you can start over again. Um, there are some color mixing silliness that they do. Um, you could also run those through color effects. So I could run those through that 917. And then they'll start running their own little color sequence. You can actually see what it's trying to do up here on the screen. <clears throat> Tries to show you kind of what it's trying to approximate. Um, these will also These also have strobes. Uh, if you're susceptible to that, please watch your eyes for a second. So you can hit strobe and then you can, again, you can kind of zoom it out. You can, there's different pulses of strobes that you can set just by choosing all these. Here's my favorite, random, huh? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> why would you ever use that? It's a haunted house. Light flicker. Even then, just, anyway, anyway. Um, use random if you want to, I don't care. But just if, if I question why we, ha why we have that big dead spot, and you're like, well, I used random, there was supposed to be a lightning strike there, and I went, aha, uh -huh. <laughs> then use a strobe and set it. Um, all right, so that's how to use those. <clears throat> so we've got our main lights are one through nine. Uh, again, you can design this any way you want to. So if you want to use the faders, you can use all of those. And let's say that we get this all set up with 31 and 32 out. There we go. So we get your prop looking the way you want it. We want to have 21 through 29 at full in a nasty green. Cool. <laughs> Yay, nasty green. Uh, I, think, I think you're cool, green. And then you get your two little movers. and I'm not gonna spend the time to move them around. Let's say that we like that look. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go, cool, I wanna record Q1, enter. Now that just came up as Q1. I've got a time of five, so it's gonna take five seconds for that to come up. I can then start to adjust my lights. So I can say, okay, cool. I wanna take all of those out because I just wanna have my movers, but I wanna take my movers. Was that our grad students? No. No? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Get out of here. Man with a headlamp. Don't hear that all the time. And Van Damme. Oh, that was hard. So either a technician or a train robber, one of the two. He was a, he was a, he was a robber. Um, all right, so then we have those lights moved, and we're going to take 121 through 29, enter, and we're going to fade those to red. And we want to record Q2, enter. And then right now I'm in Q2. If I hit the back button, now I'm back to Q1. And I could do, again, right now, if I hit go, it's going to take five seconds to fade out those lights, change our backdrop, and we're sitting in this queue. Um, so in our next one, let's do 21 through 29, effect 917, enter. So that's going to start doing that silliness. <laughs> and then we're going to take 21 through, or 31 through 32 out. And we're going to just bring up instrument number nine as our down light. And we're going to record Q3 time one, enter. Now you can see that we have a duration of a time one on that, that one. Mm -hmm. And it's also running effect number 917. So as I hit the back button, then here we are back at our first Q. Hit our second Q. And I'm going to, I'm going to do a shift delay, which is a follow, if you remember. We're going to do a shift delay of seven. 
and that'll show you right here forward or forward and hang, follow and hang, sorry. So as I hit go, it's gonna take five seconds for that cue to complete. It, the board's gonna wait for two minutes, two seconds, and then it's automatically gonna start the effect on the backdrop. And it's gonna go for that as long as you have it until we move to the next cue. If you wanna get rid of an effect, bless you, if you wanna get rid of an effect, uh, we're gonna say, let's go ahead and record this as Q4 times zero. In Q4, we're gonna take 21 through 29, effect, enter. So when you hit effect, enter, you're not giving it a number, so that means remove all effects running from it. Otherwise, if I would have just recorded, it would have just kept recording over that. Um, cool, and then we're gonna rec record that as four again. So now back to the beginning. Five second countdown, delays for two seconds, automatically fires that, and that will keep going until I hit go again to kill that effect. Kind of what you're doing. <laughs>